Good evening. Please rise for our national anthem, which will be played by Ezra Moras. Gentlemen, please remove your caps. Graduates, you may be seated. Mr. Panula, esteemed trustees, Mr. Druszynski, faculty, parents, guests, friends, and most importantly, members of the class of summer 2024. Good evening and welcome to the 169th commencement exercises of Elgin Academy. I am honored to have the privilege of beginning our ceremony this evening, a special day for all involved, but especially for the 11 members of the class in summer 2024. My responsibility is to welcome all of you assembled here today to our beautiful campus, and I do this as a representative of Elgin Academy. I also relish the opportunity to address the class of summer 2024 one final time in their careers as Elgin Academy students. I consider it an honor to provide them with some parting thoughts as they leave here to commence with the remainder of their education and their lives. At the baccalaureate dinner two evenings ago, much was said about how this class, a majority of whom are EA, EA lifers, meaning they've been at our campus since kindergarten, went above and beyond over the past year as they overcame the challenges of our upcoming school closure. They have learned how to live beyond adversity a trait that will serve them well in the future. The Greek philosopher Heraclitus said, the only constant in life is change. The moment we are born, change is a part of our lives. It's woven into the fabric of our existence, shaping our experiences, our choices, and our journeys. You have witnessed this change firsthand in your own lives. The world around you has transformed in remarkable ways how you've grown from kindergartners to the impressive graduates we've honored today. Since you began kindergarten in fall 2012, technology has evolved, social norms have shifted, and global events have shaped our lives. But whether you knew it or not, as you grew, you adapted. You embraced new technologies. You navigated evolving social landscapes, both in person and online, and you learned how to respond to global issues with resilience and insight. Change is a constant force, pushing us to adapt, to grow, and to redefine ourselves. It can be daunting, and it can be uncomfortable. But it is also where the magic happens. It is in those moments of change that we discover our true potential and our capacity for greatness. Change often brings uncertainty, but it also brings opportunity. It invites us to be creative, to be courageous, and to be compassionate. When faced with change in the future, you have the chance to redefine your path and make a meaningful impact. 
You've demonstrated your ability to embrace change at EA by deftly navigating your transition between divisions, learning how to learn in person online during the global pandemic, especially during eighth grade, when your main source of entertainment was spirited games of Among Us in two rooms of Sears Hall, and by welcoming new peers and faculty to campus with open arms. Remember that change is not something to be feared, but rather to be embraced. It is through change that we learn, evolve, and grow. It is through change that we find new ways to solve problems, to connect with others, and to achieve our dreams. The ability to adapt and thrive amidst change is a key to success and fulfillment. As you embark on your next journey, whatever it entails, I encourage you to welcome change with an open mind and a hopeful heart. Embrace the unknown, take risks, and be willing to step outside of your comfort zone. The future is not a fixed destination, but it is a series of evolving opportunities and your journey will be defined by how you respond to the changes you encounter. In your personal lives and your professional endeavors, remember, change is your ally. It is a catalyst for innovation and growth. It holds the potential to unlock new possibilities. Embrace it with enthusiasm as you guide it towards your goals and aspirations. Class of Summer 2024 students and parents, thank you for sharing this stage of your life with us. Congratulations on reaching this moment. I'm honored to help award you your diplomas today. Thank you. At academic institutions across the country, it is tradition that people hear reflections from valedictorians. For important reasons, that student occupies a special position in any institution where people learn. That person is the chief academic and the resident student scholar, and the right to be called such only comes with a combination of effort, curiosity, diligence, and perseverance. I am pleased to have the honor of introducing the class of summer 2024 valedictorian to you today. Our community and the academic world outside of Elgin Academy have recognized Quentin Padula for his focus on challenging himself and his diligent work ethic in rising to those challenges. He earned a 3.75 grade point average while taking a variety of honors and AP courses. He never earned a grade below B and the majority of his grades fall above 90%. He was named an AP scholar for his performance on six advanced placement exams, including five that he took earlier this May. He is a member of the NJCL Latin Honor Society, who has been recognized for his performance on the National Latin Exam. He was a member of the EA Scholastic Bowl team, having played a role on the state championship Masonic Bowl team in his ninth grade year. Quinn's teachers have called him a creative thinker, a diligent worker, studious and attentive, a strong analyzer and interpreter of historical sources and an active participant who takes great care in his work and comes to class engaged and ready to learn. These traits will no doubt serve him well in the future as he begins his post high school studies. Quinn, we are pleased to have shared this phase of your life with you. You have made Elgin Academy a better place and we know that you will do the same at your future schools. It is my pleasure to introduce our class of summer 2024 valedictorian, Quinton Padula. Well, I have finally been unable to avoid responsibility. I would like to start off by clarifying that I am not going to be outing people in front of everyone like Tyler did at Baccalaureate. Instead, I'm going to be outing the entire grade as a whole. Now, before I do that, I would like to thank everyone in the EA community, present or not. What set EA apart from other schools is that it was more than just a school. It was a true community. People knew and still do know each other like no other school. Students knew not only the entirety of their grade, but their entire section. 
students, students getting close with teachers was commonplace. It was also not unusual for parents to become familiar with teachers or, or faculty members. The close-knit nature of EA made it so that, among other things, the school felt alive despite its small size and students could be supported in ways that they could not at most other schools. So everyone who helped make EA, EA, thank you. Now, on to my grade in our BOGO deal senior year. Some of you may know through stories about Meow Counts, Summer Kings, Quote Boards, and Katika Calculators that we, we perhaps got a bit quirky this summer. Some people may think that this was because we were trapped in a room while relating an uncomfortable amount to waiting for Godot all summer instead of having a break from school. I would like to dispute that. As someone who has been at this school since pre-K, I think this grade, or at least the group has, who has been here for a long time, was always kind of crazy. I mean, Gorilla Club and Baby Wilson did happen, and they both involved more than a few people. As we matured, we learned to drain ourselves in. Most, mostly. Eighth grade was a year. Anyways, due to us knowing when to try and act normal, and people joining the grade who did not, this group of graduates managed to earn a reputation as somewhat normal people. We sure fooled them. Now, before I continue, I'd like to clarify, if you is not included in what I'm saying, you're actually a normal person. Okay, now where I'm going with this. We may all be a bit off our rockers, but is that a bad thing? Okay, probably. But it has some upsides. For one thing, it means we're all unique people. We are all not going to be content with doing with some boring office job or one that doesn't do anything meaningful. We're gonna we are going to all try and achieve something more of our lives, for the better or worse. Or maybe just for the better. I don't know. Depends on your opinion on Elon Musk. Being kind of wacky also means that we think outside of the box more often. And I don't know about all of you, but with the way the world is right now, I think we're going to need some out of the side of the box solutions to fix things. I recently saw a study that said all the water from the melted ice has started to cause the earth to turn slower. Yeah. You may not know right now if my grade being a little different will end up being beneficial, but what I do know is that through high jinks, low jinks, medium rare jinks, and sufficient threats to Garfield, you managed to graduate from high school a year early. It also means we're going to be starting the next stage of our lives a year early. And I would like everyone present to remember this. Life is not some race or series of goals that you can complete to be happy. Happiness is found everywhere as you go through life. Though sometimes, you may have to put some effort into fight. After all, this world is filled with light, if only you choose to see. Thank you. It is my pleasure this evening to introduce our commencement speaker. A pleasure that is made even more distinct by the fact that this person has worked so closely with our group of 11 students over the past two months. In addition, she is one of our own alumni who found her way back to Elgin Academy to teach in our middle school for the past two years. Dr. Jennifer Sampson graduated from Elgin Academy in 1988. As you might imagine, she was a very hard worker with great academic habits. In fact, she was the winner of the prestigious Mother-Daughter Award that year as the girl graduate who best typified the ideals and character of Elgin Academy. Jennifer excelled in all areas of academic endeavor, but it was certainly in English and literature where her passions and talents were most evident. She was a good and steady friend to her classmates and was an extraordinarily committed member of the EA theater community and an active participant in many EA clubs. Her creativity and her open mind made her a great community member here. And I think it is safe to say that all those who taught her here on campus would not have been at all surprised to hear of her accomplishments after leaving Elgin Academy. Dr. Sampson received her PhD and her MA in English Language and Literature from the University of Chicago and her BA in English from Kenyon College in Ohio. While at the University of Chicago, 
She was the recipient of a Mellon Fellowship and the winner of a Tlaxon Travel Award. Her dissertation, entitled The Secret History of Books, Invitations to Intimate Reading in Victorian Literature, was confirmation of her desire to make literature the focus of her academic career. Dr. Sampson has previously previous academic instructional experience at Lake Forest College, DePaul University, the University of Chicago, and the Newberry Library in Chicago. She has also done significant freelance writing, research, and editing. In addition, she continued to nurture her creative side as a consultant for various youth theater organizations in the city and the suburbs. As impressive as her academic endeavors are, Perhaps the best reason that Dr. Sampson is such a great choice to address this particular class of Elgin Academy graduates has as much to do with her kind Elgin Academy heart as it does with her remarkable intellect. Her connection to this place is deep and her thorough understanding of what made it so extraordinary both now and over the previous 185 years has been verified and cemented these past two years. Jennifer found her way back home to the place where many of her academic aspirations were born and proceeded to make a welcoming home for a newer set of EA students in her own classroom on campus, thus carrying on the time-honored tradition that we celebrate here for the final time today. We are eagerly anticipating Dr. Sampson's words to the class of summer 2024, and I could not be more pleased to welcome her to the podium this evening. Um, I want to begin by thanking Doug Sepp for inviting me to give this commencement address. I accept this honor knowing that I have absolutely earned it. Because of my charming personality, extreme intelligence, and being one of the last employees on campus. I had to do nothing more than pick at Edwards Hall and threaten to chain myself to Paul Brzezinski's desk to be recognized in this way. Well, that and I had to convince Spence that uh, this costume was required in order to give the address. Uh, he, he was having none of it, but we all know he would have looked really cute in this hat. <laughs> when I have been asked about my own experiences as a student at Elgin Academy, there are a few stories I tell about what make, makes this place special. To show how student-centered it was, I tell how I propose to perform a one-woman, two-hour-long play about the poet Emily Dickinson. Uh, don't worry, graduates, this, um, this piece comes in just under two hours. So, um, not only was I allowed to do it, our theater teacher and director, Miss Santori, agreed to stay extra, extra hours at school to direct it, and the community flocked to support me with a full house. When I want to show the rigor of EA's academics, I talk about memorizing the first 18 lines, in Middle English, of the prologue of Canterbury Tales, and how Dr. Dillman changed my writing for the better by encouraging me to prioritize clarity over parading my vocabulary skills. When I want to emphasize how EA encourages kids to move outside com comfort zones and try new things, I tell how patiently Coach Kidston helped me on the cross-country team, even though I routinely came in last at meets. When I arrived as a teacher here two years ago, even though the Ryder Center now sat on the site of the modest house where I had babysitting gigs uh, with my college counselor's kids, I quickly realized things were very much the same. As a teacher in the middle school, I was given the freedom to teach challenging texts like Twelfth Night, The Jungle Book, and The Poet X. I expected fifth graders to write Shakespearean sonnets, and they delivered, tapping out iambic pentameter and arguing about what constituted a near rhyme. Last fall, I revealed that I wanted to lead the middle school students in a night of scenes from plays performed here at Elgin Academy during the last century. I wanted the second act to be a series of dramatic death scenes. Furthermore, and most horrifyingly, 
I had no idea how long the running time was. <laughs> and this is the important bit. No one stopped me. In fact, the community flocked to support us with full houses. As a teacher, I also got to put the summer seniors through that most archaic of hazing rituals, memorizing the beginning of the prologue to Canterbury Tales. It has been a great privilege to work with this group this summer, to introduce them to the kind of reading and thinking they'll encounter in college. Uh, we started with Waiting for Godot, everyone's favorite poolside read about the pointlessness of life. But we went on to discover that racism still exists, uh, Virginia Woolf can make a really big deal out of a toy boat on the serpentine or a kingfisher or a long nap. Uh, robots might become more to us than our Roombas. And what Huckleberry Finn really needed to do was step aside and let Jim take over. Come to think of it, after taking this class, um, some of you might not even need to go to college. I didn't really know any of you well before this class. But I was delighted to watch her triumphs in that crazy double room with stickers checking off the days, the quotation wall, and a shrine to Hilltopper Pride run amok. I learned so much about your strengths and passions. Tyler, you are a whiz with the five paragraph essay. You unfurl convincing arguments peppered with just the right quotations. It was a pleasure to read your work. Brayden, you brought so much thoughtfulness and sharp observation to our discussion of texts. I could always rely on you when discussion flagged and you enriched even the liveliest exchanges. Alex, I suspected from your first writing assignment that you were the reincarnation of the poet Don McCray. Your baccalaureate poem with its precise language and well-managed sentiment showed me you are much more than that. Ezra, you were always willing to read in class and lend the words dramatic flair. You attacked the Canterbury Tales with enthusiasm and a killer accent. Consider me starstruck. Haley, your 10-minute play showed me you know how to listen to those around you, if only to mock them with pitch-perfect humorous dialogue. All kidding aside, your friends do find in you a champion and a listening ear, and your affection for them is powerful. Frida, you are a marvel. You worked so hard to understand complicated texts in, in your second language, persisting through frustration, reading Orlando in two languages, and doing outside research to solidify your understanding of the dough. Uh, Mia, you began the year as a sleeper agent. Quiet in class, but behind closed doors, reading with care and making wonderful observations in your daily writing. It was lovely to see you begin to volunteer those ideas out loud in the past weeks. Addison, <laughs> you're a strong leader. You showed that you could command the room and nab the attention of your peers to jumpstart our student-led discussions. And you were instrumental in bringing about the Chicago field trip that gave us all a little respite from the breakneck pace of second semester. Quinn, you are a master of tone and character creation. In your play, you somehow created a sense of menace during a dialogue about overwise ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> and in your short story, you introduced us to a compelling paranormal adventurer with anti-hero flair. Ella, I love the way you pondered your diction for your poem, showed true curiosity about the text in your writing, and were always quick to understand my suggestions about your already strong work and implement helpful changes. Then, you found successfully humor in Waiting for Godot. You should be proud of that and your many other achievements. Your ability to laugh in the face of existentialism or 224 hours of summer classes will benefit you for years to come. Elgin Academy is a rare place, and this summer I discovered that it gathers together the kinds of students that one can know for only eight weeks and still be completely invested in their success, feel immensely proud of their efforts, marvel at the strength of the bonds between them, and come to unequivocally love them. So I've come to realize Elgin Academy 
is a utopia, an Arcadia, a Xanadu of your evening. How can we really be surprised when tomorrow morning it vanishes into the mist? Elgin Academy is not the real world, but here is the advantage that that affords you. You can now go live in the real world as a product of this place's idealism. In a world that encourages you to fear, be courageous enough to love others. In a world that encourages self-interest, be strong enough to help others. In a world that encourages you to see things as stark dichotomies, black or white, masculine or feminine, robot or human, splash around in soft rays at least some of the time. You, our final graduating class, have been made ready as only a campus full of idealists and dreamers can make you. And you are ready. From here on, you may become star athletes, religious leaders, important scientists, CEOs, politicians, film directors, or restaurant tycoons. You may change the world, or at least your area of it. And you may also discover that whatever success you find, that success will not be where you find the most joy and satisfaction. You may feel most alive while watching fire fireworks with friends on the 4th of July, of being present with your parents as they age, driving around in the wee hours in search of food and fun, protesting on the National Mall, reading bedtime stories, tossing a football during downtime, or going gray with someone you first realized you had a crush on while trying to focus on your math homework in the common area of Edwards Hall. Here you have been prepared for the struggles, successes, and satisfaction awaiting you out there in the real world. We can't wait to see what you'll do. Go soak up this last bit of summer and enjoy your next adventure. As a student council president, I would like to thank this time to thank uh, uh, to take this time opportunity to thank our speaker, Dr. Jennifer Sampson, for her words of advice, support, and encouragement. In addition, we are so thankful for your willingness to speak to us today. There is so much there is much to learn from what you said, and we appreciate sharing your thoughts with us. On behalf of my classmates, I would like to thank you for spending our summer, especially in this commencement today with us for sharing your wisdom. Please accept this ultimate can we give as an enduring expression of our appreciation for you. For you. Daughter Award is presented to the girl graduate who best typifies the ideals and character of Elgin Academy. The recipient of this award was selected by the faculty back in May by secret ballot, and this announcement is a surprise even to them. Winning two tennis state championships, one in doubles with her sister, and one in singles, and the subsequent joy and connectedness that she brought to our community with her accomplishments on the court likely would have been enough to make Madison Lanton a near lock for this award. However, I'm going to lead with the argument that it is, it is Addison's off-the-court accomplishments within the Elgin Academy community that make her a more than worthy recipient of this award. Addison's teachers recognize her for being an engaged, eager learner who does not shy away from a challenge. Early in her 10th grade year, Senora Metzler shared the following about Addison. Addison is a fantastic example of determination, time management, and goal setting. While busier and more absent due to tennis than most, she still tends to be one of the top performers on our assessments. 
I appreciate how she adds to every discussion the lesson and always asks questions when she has them. Addison does her best every day and is consistent in her homework completion and assessment preparation. I know that she's going to have another great year. In Addison's final advisor letter this past June, Ms. Anderson wrote the following. Addison is a proverbial confetti cannon. Her energy is contagious and she makes our learning fun. When I turned to her for her leadership, she was always very helpful, especially with our year-long U.S. history timeline and our group video project. I hope Addison knows what a tremendous positive impact she makes on others. I witnessed her time and time again exhibit patience, grace, positivity, and enthusiasm. It has been a pleasure to teach Addison, and I am so excited for her future. There are myriad remarks from Addison's other teachers throughout the years that are similar to those two quotes. Addison's inquisitive nature and desire to learn led to the upper school faculty to honor her with the Dartmouth College Book Award this past May. Again, these sentiments alone make Addison worthy of, of the Mother Daughter Award. But I would be remiss if I didn't mention Addison's tennis prowess. I posit that Addison has had more success and impact in a single area of her EA experience than any student in EA's history had in their single area of expertise. In three years of IHSA competition, she placed third and then first with Noel in state doubles competition and then first in singles this past year. She has been named one of the top 50 high school players in the country by USA Today and repeatedly competes nationally. Addison would have every right to be boastful about her accomplishments. And while she is fierce on the court, off the court she bears an admirable humility about her unparalleled talents. We wish Addison the best as she matriculates to Louisiana State University next fall, where she will continue to make her mark in the classrooms, throughout the campus, and yes, on the tennis courts. It is my pleasure to present Addison Latin with the Mother Daughter Award. the ideals and character of Elgin Canada. The recipient of this award was selected back in May by the faculty by secret ballot, and once again, this announcement is a surprise to them. However, I'm going to give away that surprise with two words. Stock market. In his early days in the upper school, Tyler Berlin stood at the podium at assembly and said those two words as a prelude to the announcement he was about to make regarding Mr. Kinston's stock market club. His ability to take on a role, such a role as an underclass person, demonstrated his willingness to take risks and his penchant for leadership. Fast forward a couple of years and Tyler was now leading each assembly as the final student council president in the history of Elgin Academy. Tyler's leadership carried over to the classroom as well. Here are some thoughts his teachers shared with him from this year. Mr. Padden noted that Tyler is famous in the whole school for his organizational ability, his engineering ability, and his ability in making long-term projects work. Similarly, Ms. Saavedra shared that his technical skills were a great contribution and help to his group, just as they have been throughout the year in every single project he did. Throughout his upper school experience, Tyler has been recognized by his teachers for his excellence in multiple areas. He is a member of the International Thespian Society and Quill and Scroll. He has been a vital member of the golf team. This past May, the EA faculty selected him for two awards. The Xerox Award for Innovation in Information Technology and the St. John's College Book Award. Unofficially, but of equal importance, Tyler has been the student who has helped faculty the most with technology needs over the past several years. As a final encapsulation of why Tyler is so deserving this award, 
I share these words from Miss Anderson in his final advisor letter. This year you served as Duco president, transformed Sears Gallery into an EA history installation, toiled over the yearbook, rallied the troops for the stock market club, set the stage for prom, and did your best with both helping out and having fun in a hundred other ways to make the absolute most out of your last year here. I am so proud of you. You are an example of what I strive to do with my life, which is to leave people, places, and things better than before. Regardless of context, and even in the most difficult of circumstances, we always have options within reach to bring joy and good and better to whatever we found or wherever we found ourselves. Bravo, Tyler. It has been gratifying to observe Tyler's transformation into a confident young man ready for any challenge that comes his way. Tyler, we also thank you for showing all of us how to deal with a turbulent situation with such grace, leadership, and a positive can-do attitude. It is my pleasure to present Tyler Berlin with the Ora L. Pelton III Award. Time has now come for us to celebrate with the class of summer 2024 the completion of their Elgin Academy experience. In a moment, I will signal for the graduates of the Elgin Academy class of summer 2024 to rise in preparation for the conferring of their diplomas. First, I am pleased to call forward Mr. Kyle Spencer, the senior member of the EA summer 2024 faculty. <laughs> Mr. Spencer is completing his fifth year teaching on this campus. Ladies and gentlemen, Trustee Padula, on behalf of Mr. Jasinski, the administration, and my teaching colleagues, it is a genuine pleasure and honor to inform you that these candidates for graduation have completed the prescribed course of study as approved by this faculty and are thereby entitled to receive an Elgin Academy diploma. We, their teachers, proudly recommend them to you for the conferring of these diplomas and assure you that they are ready to use the knowledge that they have gained here in order to lead their lives with confidence and compassion. Class of summer 2024, please rise. <laughs> Alexander Aurelio Almazan. Tyler James Berlin.
Braden Cece. Frida Marie Eicher Klingenhagen. Ella Rose Hoover. Madison Ray Lanton. Ezra Michael Horas. Quinton Thomas Padula. Mia Lourdes Velasquez.
Haley Rose Vogt. Benjamin Roman Wagerson. I proudly present to you the Elgin Academy Class of Summer 2024. <laughs> Graduates, you may be seated. Good evening, everybody. Uh, every year I do a graduation, I feel short and shorter. I think, I'm thinking my next job should be the head of a K-4 school. Uh, there, someone wrote, I want to say 20 years ago, but it's probably closer to 30, uh, a book titled something like, Everything I Ever Needed to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. And I think that's probably true to some extent, but quite frankly, I think it, it spoke to how, what you should do in life. But if I were writing the book, or I'd just do the intro, if you want to know everything about what humankind really does, I would look to William Shakespeare. Our rebels now are ended. These are after. As I foretold you, we were all spirits and are melted into air, into thin air. And like the baseless fabric of this vision, the cloud-capped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself, yea, all which it inherit shall dissolve. And like this insubstantial pageant fading, leave not a rat behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little life is rounded with the sleeve. Hilltoppers forever. We invite everyone to stand and sing the Elgin Academy hymn with us. The words and music are in your program.
Sydney. As our commencement exercises come to a close this evening, congratulations once again to the class of summer 2024 and their families. On behalf of the EA faculty, staff, administration, and trustees. We ask you to remain seated during the recessional during which the class of summer 2024 release. We welcome everyone to join us on the reception. Join the reception on the clock. Please join me one last time and congratulate the 169th graduating Elgin Academy class of summer 2024. Graduates, please rise. Here comes the photo opportunity. <laughs> you may toss your caps on the count of three. One, two, Thank you. 